We had clothes to wear. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We were able to drive yes. to this place. Yes. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. He is good, good, good. Woo. His name is above all names. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Okay. okay you don't, don't clap this morning. I notice you have your palms in your hand. Today is what Sunday? Today is what Sunday? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Why? Because this when Jesus was what? Entering what? Jerusalem. And what were the people saying? Hosanna. Hosanna. Can you say Hosanna this morning? Hosanna. in our lives. Amen? Can we say what? Hosanna! Come on, Hosanna! Hosanna! Come on, Hosanna! Hosanna! John -o. Oh, magnify the Lord.
Come on, we're gonna sing that one more time.
we thank you this morning, Lord, for our own time heartbeat. We thank you, Father, for the warm blood that runs through our veins. We thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning, Lord, giving us another opportunity to come into your anointed sanctuary to exalt you this morning, Lord, to give praises unto you, Lord, because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We thank you, Father, for guiding us this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for food, clothing, and shelter. This morning, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for giving me another opportunity to come one more time into your sanctuary and to lift up my hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance. Father, I pray this morning for those that don't know you as Lord Jesus Christ. This morning I rebuke any hindering spirit that comes up against your people. Come up against this ministry because we know, Lord, that you is a battle axe. You is a buckle and you is a shield. And that, I say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Most of all, Father, as the word come today, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you will open our ears. Let us hear what thus says the Lord. Because your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our pathway. We know that your word, Lord, can guide us and keep us from going down a crooked path. Allow your light, Lord, to guide us this morning, Lord, because we know as long as we have Christ in the center, Lord, that we cannot do wrong. And we thank you for your son in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, if anyone here this morning that has any infirmities in their bodies, Lord, we know, Lord, that you as a healer. Touch those right now, Lord, that has diabetes, those that have tumors in their bodies, Lord, we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would dry it up. Dry it up. Because we know that you is a healer. And we need healing this morning, Lord. Some of us, Lord, is going through so many aches and so many pains, but we know, Lord, that you can heal. So touch those from the crown of their head all the way down to the sole of their feet. In the mighty name of Jesus. Touch our pastor today, Father, as he brings forth the word. Let us be heroes and doers of the word, Lord. And I pray this morning, Lord, for these men that's standing right next to me, Lord. You said in your word, Lord, that the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord and he is delighted in our way so let us be kingdom builders Lord and let us be delighted in your ways Lord because we know that you is always in the midst of everything that we do and Father when we have sung our last song prayed our last prayer ate our last meal and walked our last journey. We ask, Father, that you will give us a place in your kingdom. And Father, allow your word, Lord, to dwell richly in our hearts. 
but we can live and not die. In Jesus' name, amen. Colossians 3 and 8 says, But now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Good morning, Parkview. I'm Brother Norman Thompson, and these are your announcements for today. Parkview, the pastor and first lady will hold a meet and greet for new members on Sunday, April 7th at 8.30 a.m. in the upstairs conference room. Light breakfast will be served. Also, if you are not a new member but never got a chance to meet and greet with Pastor and First Lady, come on out. Again, that's April 7th at 8.30 a.m. Thanks, Pastor and First Lady. Attention Parkview parents, students, our third quarter student recognition will be on Sunday, April 14th, 2024, at our 11 o'clock a.m. service. This is a time when we give special recognition to our Parkview Christian Life Center students who have excelled in their academic and other curricular achievement during the third quarter. Recognition forms will be available at the scholarship desk. Please complete this form in its entirety along with the supporting documentation and submit it to Sister Maureen Williams no later than Sunday, April 7th. No forms will be accepted after the due date. The Scholarship Ministry. Parkview, please send all announcements Tuesday evening before that Sunday to announcements at pclctheview.org. Be sure to spread the word about our monthly food giveaway here at Parkview. Text PCLC to 833-600-9222 to sow a seed into the ministry. Also, you can view every service live from anywhere when you subscribe to Pastor Henry Babers on YouTube. Please make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss the word. To our visitors, on behalf of the Parkview Christian Life Center family, we welcome you and thank you for joining us. God planned for you to be right here and we know he has a word for you that will change your life. As a reminder, all services are recorded, so we ask that you please limit your movement during the sermon. Please make sure all small children are accompanied to the restroom by an adult. Also, it is very important for you to turn off or silence all cell phones. And please, no eating or drinking in the sanctuary. Let us respect God's house. Now prepare yourselves for the word of excellence and to receive the King Division and provision God has for you. Again, I'm Brother Norman Thompson, your announcer. Thank you, and remember, this is the year we speak life. God bless. Amen, amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Come on, let us rejoice and be glad to be in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It's always good to start counting your blessings before you start complaining. Amen. I think if we count our blessings first, we won't complain. Now, how many of you know God has been good and he's good right now? Amen. He is so good. 
so good. I don't. I think sometimes we have to look around this world and see how destitute certain people are, certain countries are, and then we look and look around our homes and see just how good God has been to us. Amen. Amen. What to God be all the praise and glory. Uh, last week we had um, one of our candidates for city commission running uh, here. I think he was running for seat two. And today is Brother Daniel. Where is he at? We come on up here. Amen. You look different way back there. Amen. I'm going to have you just take a few minutes to share uh, your vision and uh, then we'll go forward. Amen. God bless you. Y'all heard me last week say that when I said that most people who complain don't vote. Not most, a lot of people who complain don't vote. And the greatest complaint or the loudest way you can ever speak is through voting. Your complaint, listen, your complaint don't count. Your vote does. Y'all can have that. That's a quote you can have. That sounds good to me. Your complaint don't count. Your, your complaint doesn't count. Your vote does. Amen? All right. Hallelujah. Uh, let us get our hearts and our mind prepared. Uh, we're still in our giving for the over the top. We have this Sunday and next Sunday. And every Sunday somebody has been ready to plant their seed, their sacrificial see uh, for the overtop giving. Some of you are just learning about it. This may be your first year here, but you still participated without having full knowledge of how long it's been going on. The impact that it's had on our ministry and then on the individuals who has been giving and their families. God has always honored our overtop giving sacrifice seed. So we have this Sunday and we have next Sunday. If you have not planted your seed, uh, openly, certainly you have two more Sunday to do so. So if you're here today and you are ready to put your seat on the altar, uh, let me see your hand. Anyone? All right, back here. Praise God. Anyone over here? I see a palm brand, brand, waving. Amen. All right, let's give them a hand as they come forth and put, put their seat down. God bless you. And if, amen. You can come forth, or if you want to say something, you can, or you can just, um, 
you can just uh, send it. Amen. If you don't want to walk and you don't have anything to say, amen. Bless you so much. Here's one of our newest member. I want you, I want all the ones that, all the ones that have been here for a while, I want to say this. Y'all listen real carefully. When I look around on Monday, God bless you so much. In the Bible study, I see 70% new members. I guess the one that's been around for a while, y'all done learned all y'all need to know. <laughs> Nothing else for you to learn about Jesus. Amen. We'll see how that work out for you. Amen. Let's give God a hand for these seed that has been sown this morning. <clears throat> Father God, we ask your blessing upon those that have sown, sown cheerfully out of their heart. Maybe even God sacrificed and stressed themselves. And it's, it, it is impossible for us to outgive you in any capacity. No matter how hard we try, you prove over and over again that you outgive us. You just do it, God. You, you give more than we can ever imagine. And you don't just give money for money. God, you open up other doors. And we say thank you for it. Bless this seed, multiply in the awesome mighty name of Christ Jesus, let every heart say, Amen. Hallelujah. All right, uh, Deacon Cobb is not here. Deacon Washington or someone come and uh, take that seat. You know, Deacon Cobb normally makes sure I have some water or Gatorade up there. I'm thirsty. I don't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> Amen. God bless you so much. I'm going to have the praise team come and bless us. And after they bless us, we will uh, prepare our hearts and our minds for our tithes and offering. Amen. Amen. Nope, I ain't leading. Mm -mm. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is a good God. He's a mighty God. He's able to do anything but fail. Hallelujah. God's grace. God's mercy and his grace.
God will never make a mistake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank him for waking me up this morning. Close and in my right mind. Reasonable portion of help and strength. It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. Hallelujah. Don't forget about your Savior. Don't forget about the one who brought you. Praise the Lord. I got that from listening to my pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name. God we serve. Amen. Uh, there is one verse in that song that always made me think about how good God is to all of us. When he said, um, I strayed away even though I knew the word. But God grace, but God grace and his mercy brought me all the way all the way back to him and it's so good to know that he's he looks beyond our faults and the lord see and the lord sees our need thank god for his grace amen grace is that unmerit uh love of god that we have not earned or deserved I don't think we can ever earn it or deserve it. God is just good. Amen. All right, we're going to get our hearts and our mind ready. Uh, let me say this. Last night, I uh, had an uh, awesome concert of, of the festival. Uh, can't call the name right now, but um, it was good. I stayed, uh, and then I uh, looked at it and saw that piano. And then sometimes I wonder, is there anyone in the church that plays the piano? You know, that's, that's what the church churches used to play. And uh, people were skillful in playing the piano. Let me see the hand. Is there somebody that doesn't know how to play a piano? Who? All right. Anybody else? Who else? There's one person in the whole church. I uh, I knew a lady. She couldn't play the piano. She couldn't play not one note. But the way she approached the piano, she walked a little like she was a maestro. She sat down on the bench, on the seat, spread her dress, lift her hand like this here, and hit those keys, and my God, she couldn't play a note. <laughs> but you would think she could. Amen. All right. Um, let's get our hearts and our mind ready to cheerfully. How many of you love giving to God? Amen. Everything we have everything you and I have God gave it to us even the air we breathe came from the Lord and comes from the Lord uh, the Bible says naked we came into this world and naked we're going to leave we brought nothing into this world and surely we shall take nothing out but in the process of being in the world, God blesses us with material things, finance. And when he does, we got to realize all of it come from him. 
And then he asked us to plant a seed, be faithful, and plant a seed that he may even give us more. And sometimes what we do, we forget, and we take that seed and become selfish with it and say, well, this mine's too. And God will let us have it. But he says that a curse, you're cursed with a curse. He said, because the seed belongs to the Lord. Amen? So don't eat your seed. Don't wear your seed. Don't, uh, you know, go on vacation with your seed. Amen. Don't give your girlfriend your seed. Amen. Plant your seed. Amen. And then God will even bless you more. So our tithing pledge is coming on the screen before us. Let us stand. And we're going to say it together very boldly. I am a titer, and I support the kingdom of God on this earth. I believe that the Parkview Christian Life Center is doing kingdom business, and therefore I plant my seed in great ground that will bring forth prosperity in every area of my life. I have no time for doubt or doubters. I am taught to obey the word of God so that the blessing of Christ shall overtake me and the favor of God shall find me and my cup shall run over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, it's seed time. Amen.
Put your hands towards your seat. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for making us sowers. Your word declare you give seed to the sower. And wherever seeds are sown, there must be an expectancy for harvest. We thank you, Lord God, that we give for kingdom work. And as kingdom work is being done, Lord God, there will be more crowns to lay at your feet. There will be more souls saved for the kingdom. The word declare that your return will be 30, 60, and 100 fold. So every time you give, there's an expectation depending on where you are in your giving. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And the church say, is coming up. Uh, next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. So this week, starting Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, good, up to Good Friday, we're going to have service. Uh, we're going to have at least two of our ministers sharing each night. We ask that you come out and be a part of it. Amen? And let's just worship the Lord during this week of passion and resurrection. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Been so good to me. You have your palms in your hand this morning. We want you to start and sing it with us. Praising Him. And the hymn is Praise Him. Praise Him. Oh. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus. Bless him. Bless him. Savior. He's worthy.
Say right there, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. his name. Hallelujah. Father God, in the awesome, mighty name of Christ Jesus, you're so good. Yes, Lord. You have been, you have been our anchor and our bridge over troubled water. 
matter what life have brought our way, no matter how dark the time may have been, have been, you've been the light, a lamp unto our path, a light unto our feet. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this Passion Week. Lord, where they celebrated your entrance and crucified you about a week later. Through it all, God, you stay steadfast. You hung on that cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they did. Thank you right now, God. Speak to our hearts this morning. Hallelujah. Speak to our situation. Each and every one of us have our own trials that we're dealing with. But your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Cutting us under, dividing, and God giving us victory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare yokes are broken, burdens are destroyed, and the saints of God walk in victory. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give him the highest praise. Come on, magnify him. Glory, God. Nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. To God be all the praise and all the glory. We're going to read two passages of Scripture today. Uh, since it's Palm Sunday, let's go to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 12. And verse 9, we'll start there. St. John 12 and 9. It says, much, much people, John 12 and 9, much people of the Jews, therefore, now let's go down to verse 12. Let's go down to verse 12. On the next day, much people that were to come to the feast, when they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass set thereon at his ridden, fear not, daughters of Zion, behold thy king, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass coat, amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, and I want you to turn now to the gospel of Matthew, Chapter 22, Matthew 22, and um, verse 46, one verse right now. We're going to walk back from that verse. In Matthew 20, the 22nd chapter in verse 46, it says this, And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Amen. Then ask him any more questions. Uh, and they weren't able to answer. Amen. So we look at that verse, verse 46 there, and we ask ourselves, what did Jesus say? Or what did Jesus do that nobody was able to answer him? Or nobody asked him another question from that day forth? He was dealing with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they wanted to challenge him on what was the duty of man. What is, what, is, what is required of us 
from the Lord. Now, I always say this as a pastor and even as a follower of Christ. The main thing I want to know is what do God require of me? If I can understand what God is requiring of me, then I know how to apply it to my life. And then I can walk in blessings. If I don't know what God is requiring of me, then I'm just beating the air, shooting in the dark. And I hope I get lucky. I want to know what God is saying, what is required of us. So we have to back back up and we have to look at these verses. And the verse, we have to start at verse 34. And it says in verse 34, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducee to silence, they were gathered together. Y'all see that? The Pharisees and the Sadducee didn't like each other, didn't get along with each other. But they came together because they had a common enemy, and it was Jesus. He was tearing apart both of, both of them, their religions. The Pharisees had their way, their tradition, their traits, their worship. The Sadducee has theirs, and they didn't agree on very much. But they agreed that Jesus was a problem. Amen. It's sort of like when David uh, had to go get his sheep out of the lion in the bear mouth. You know, lions and bears don't work together. But sometimes people who never works together will work together. If you're their common enemy, well, amen, yeah. they'll come together just to settle the common enemy. And Jesus was an enemy to religion. Did y'all hear that? He's, he still a, a, is an enemy today to religion. Religion is a form of worship where we use the name of Jesus, or in that case, they were using Jehovah as their form of worship. But then they turn around and did whatever they wanted to. It is called religion. Whenever God's word does not rule your life, your home, your marriage, your relationship, if God's word is not ruling, then you are religious. Amen. That means that you, you know of God, you go through the rituals, but you're not going to apply the word. So you are a very religious person. Religious person, religious people will come to church. That don't mean they're going to follow the word. Amen. Amen. And Jesus was destroying their religion because he came and he was speaking about truth. What it is to truly serve God. What it is to truly serve your fellow man. And they, didn't, they, they were more self-centered. They were more about themselves and, you know, they wasn't concerned about the well-being of others. They wasn't forgiving. They wasn't loving. They wasn't patient. They were just religious. Amen. Um, what we do on Sunday morning in worship ought to show throughout the rest of the week. How many of y'all agree? You see, uh, religious, religious people can... Um, wave their palm branches. And I'm not talking about this morning. I'm talking about every Sunday. On Sunday, but don't walk the life afterward. So, uh, they didn't like each other. Look what the Bible says. So they got together, and look at verse uh, 35. Then one of them, the smart one, 
which was a lawyer. He got his law degree. Now the lawyer is about to test the Lord. He asked him a question, tempting him and saying, now tempting him meaning this lawyer thought he had him trapped. You know, like he gonna make Christ look foolish. The rest of them are looking, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are looking as the lawyer or poor Jesus tempting him. In his mind, he thinks that Jesus is not going to be able to um, work his way out of this. So he says to him about the law and what it is. He said to him, he says, master. Now he wasn't, Jesus wasn't his master, but you know, people say one thing just to flatter you. Amen, somebody. Uh, I say one thing, some, some people say anything to flatter you. Amen. We love flattery too. Got to be careful when you get all that praise. Amen. We like some children sometimes, you know, our grandchildren when they start praising us, I know they want something. <laughs> Amen. All right, look what he says. He said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Because he was a lawyer, a, a biblical lawyer, a theologian, not just a lawyer of the law. He was a lawyer according to the scripture. And he just, you know, he says, uh, you know, which is the great commandment in the law. Jesus said unto him, okay, since you want to test me, he says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. You, you, if you love God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind, you ain't got nothing else to love him with. That's, that's all it requires. Amen. It's easy to read. But the first commandment he says is that nothing else is going to matter until you love God. And then look what Jesus says about the first, the next one. He said, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two hang hang all the law and the prophet. Now, isn't it amazing that Jesus says, if you keep two things, you fulfill all the law and all that the prophet said. Two things, if you will love God and then you will love people. Amen. God said, if we can love God, then we can love and love people, you have fulfilled the law. You have fulfilled the prophecy because you're not going to hurt anybody. You're not going to backstab anybody. You're not going to have bitterness and you're not going to have hatred. Amen. But first of all, he said, the first thing you got to do is love God. You, you notice he didn't say, and, and we, we touched a little of this last a couple of weeks. You notice he didn't say you got to love people first. Amen, somebody. He said, the first commandment is to love God. Above everything else, you must personally, use the word personally, say personally. You must personally first love God. Not love your church, not love your choir, not love your usher ministry, not love yourself. Amen. Not love any, anything above falling in love with God. Everybody must see how important this is. We're here tonight, today in collective worship. This, we are here together and we're worshiping God. Amen. Amen. This is called corporate worship. But corporate worship really don't work unless you have, have had personal worship. Okay, y'all, listen. Corporate worship really don't come together unless each and every one of us have a personal relationship with God. 
So when we come together, electricity, spiritual power is in the air. If, if you've been worshiping before you got here, if you've been giving God praise and thanks for what he's been doing through the week, if you don't had your time of devotion and you don't went through your trials and God done gave you victory from last Sunday, by the time we get here this Sunday, you have a testimony and I have a testimony and we all begin to give God praise corporately for what he done individually. How many of you don't have some victory this week? How many of you don't have some challenges this week? And through your challenges, God still gave you victory. And he done brought us back to the house of the Lord. And now that we're here, it ought to be a noise in the house. It ought to be some praise in the house because God been good to all of us. He done done something for every last one of us. This week, God been blessed all of us. So we got a praise on our lips. Amen. Matter of fact, matter of fact, he, if you know he's been good to you, it's hard for somebody who have a complaint to hinder you from giving God praise. Sometimes you can sit beside somebody that's not grateful, but if you're grateful and you're thankful, it won't put out your praise because you can't help but give God praise for what he have done in your life. Matter of fact, go ahead and give them an individual praise. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and tell God, I thank you for what you've done for me. Let's go ahead and sit there at the fear. I give you praise, God. You've been good to me. Hallelujah. Glory be the God. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not talking about just good because we have material things. I'm not talking about he's just been good because you have a refrigerator with food in it, a pantry with food in it, a deep freezer with food in it, and a roof over your head and a bed to sleep in. I'm talking about if he didn't do nothing materially, I want to thank him for spiritually being my God. Hallelujah. This spiritual relationship outweighed the material thing. in love with God and not based on what he has done naturally. Jesus said, first of all, watch what he said. He said, first thing, you got to love God. That means that we got to really quit playing around. You need some personal time in your prayer closet. You need some time to meditate and read scripture. You need time to uh, just hear from God without, without the pastor. You ought to be singing or making a, even, you listen, making a joyful noise to the Lord in your personal life. Amen. Singing to God about what he has done. Blessing the Lord. He said, now the first commandment is we love God. And then he says, look, put that verse back up. He said the second one verse, he said uh, verse, uh, 39, put it on the screen. And he said, the second one is like unto it. The second one is like, almost like the first one. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. God said that now the second one is like unto it. Y'all see the word like unto it? He didn't say the, the second one is equal with the first one. He said like it, close, but not equal in comparison. And why is that? If you fall, if you call yourself loving people first and loving God second, it ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's like unto it. You can love people, but you can love people and not love God. It's not really love either. You can't really love people unless you love God. And you know what I said a few weeks ago, it's that phileo, physical love. It is not the agape type of love that he's talking about. See, you, sometimes we fall in love with people. People get in a relationship and they, they say, I'm, you know, we, we're so in love. You ever seen people um, so in love with each other? But God is nowhere near them. 
God is not in the midst of their relationship, and they are so phileo physically in love. They are attracted to the, each other. And they just spend so much time going to sleep with the phone. <clears throat> Wake up and realize they didn't even hang up. We're in love. We're in love. And God says, you can be in love the second one and not like the first one. I've seen two people so in love again with each other, but they didn't worship. They didn't give God any part of their relationship, whether it was marriage or their dating. God was not in the midst of it. They didn't bring that relationship to a church to worship. They took that, that Sunday to go spend some time with each other. And now God says, you don't took the second one over the first one. God said, I told you to love God first and then love your neighbor. You don't love your, you don't fell in love with somebody and you don't have an anchor. Come on now. You don't have, you don't have stability. Amen. You don't know where the foundation is that call love. You're loving and you're not building on a solid rock. And that's a lot of time we have our problem. So he said, these are the first two. He said, if you keep those two, he says, you don't have to worry about the law and the prophet. You don't fulfill everything because you love God and you love people. That's what everything is hanging on. Following God is exactly that. Loving God and then loving people. Amen. Then Jesus go a little bit further. And look what he says unto them. Let's go down to verse 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, he said, okay, uh, what do you think of Christ whose son he is? They said unto him, he's the son of David. Now watch what Jesus said. Jesus said, okay, y'all were worried about your little law and all that. What you say of Christ? Do you even know him? And he, and he said, who is he? And they said, he's the son of David. Jesus goes a little further in the other verse. So he said to them, he said, if, if, if I'm David's son, why did David call me Lord? And why did David say, my Lord shall sit on the right hand? And, and, and so David saw him as the Lord, Christ. See, you cannot love God if you don't know who he is. Come on now, you got to know who he is. And you can't know who he is until you confess your sin. Amen. Personally, you, Jesus does not introduce himself until we confess our sins. Amen. We have a form of godliness. We know, you know, that's why this Passion Week and this Sunday and next Sunday, every, you're going, most churches are going to have a crowd of people. Why? Because people have a form of godliness. They know that somebody is up there greater than us. And some people say, I pray to God, but you can't even pray to him until you know him. Amen. You can pray to him to get saved. You can pray to him to receive the Holy Spirit, but you can't be asking for things and want the blessing and don't even want the blesser. Hey Amen, somebody. Anybody hungry for Jesus? Their heart wasn't right. Only thing they're concerned about uh, their ways, their laws, keeping everything in order. And, I'm, and it, it's so sad to think when people look at Christ that way, even today. Never take Christ as he's somebody that's going to pull my life together. And when I need him, I can only call him for my needs. Amen. And when I don't need him anymore, I need to go on about my business. God is more than that. A relationship with God is a sweet thing. Amen. Hallelujah. My God, I, hallelujah. I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. Somebody shout, he's blessing me right now. And he really is. He's blessing you well right now. Even if you don't know it, God is blessing us right now. The fact that our blood is running warm in our vein, the fact that our hearts are beating right on time, 
The fact that we're able to breathe in and breathe out. Got arms we can wave the morning. Legs we can walk on this morning. I don't care what's going on in your life. God is blessing us right now. Oh, my God. Jesus, listen, Jesus. You may say, well, why did you read? They waved on palm branches. And then you go to, you got to love God. And you got to love people. Because you can wave your palm branches and not love God. You can wave your palm branches and not love people. Amen, somebody. That, 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 as Jesus entered into Jerusalem, that's Palm Sunday. They call it Palm Sunday. He find a donkey. He find a donkey. Look at Jesus. Hallelujah. He, the, the king of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, on the whole world. He could have came in on a, on a golden chariot with white horses pulling him, but not Jesus. He find a donkey. And he, uh, that had never been written. And he ride down in Jerusalem because this is his day. This is what the reason for which he was born. This is the reason he came in the world. He rides in on a donkey. Someone said, well, I'll a donkey because, see, he wanted them to know he was not a warrior. He came in peace. Amen. You can't, you can't do much, too much fighting on a donkey. Amen. He didn't come on a war horse. He came on a donkey. And then, the, then they cried out. They say, daughters of Zion, women of Zion, women of Jerusalem and Judea and Israel, women, here come your king riding on a donkey. Hello, ladies. Don't miss your king. Because he's riding a hoop, a hoopty. Don't, don't, don't miss your king. It's not what you're riding on. I wish I had a church. It matter who you are. It matter whose you are. Amen. It wasn't the donkey. It was who were riding the donkey. Come on, give God a shout praise today. He's the Lord, strong and mighty. He's the king of glory. Riding on a donkey. Coming in Jerusalem. And as he's riding this donkey, here come the crowd. This is Jesus' day. They're waving palm branches. They're saying, Hosanna. Come on, church. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Look like the whole world is pulling for him. Look like everybody loves him that day. Look like everybody ready to praise him that day. But I told you, praise and love is more than a fictitious thing. It's more than outwardly. It got to be something on the inside. They were waving no palm branches in their hand, but they weren't waving it in their heart. I need somebody in part of you. Your heart is saying, I love you, Jesus. Come on now, is there anybody here giving God praise from the heart? They wave the palm branches. A crowd. Can I pause for a few minutes before I close today? If you're going to serve God, don't serve him for the praise of a crowd. If you're going to serve God, don't, don't serve him for people to give you accolades. If you're going to serve God, serve God out of a pure heart. If nobody ever give you a compliment, if nobody ever give you a, a, a praise, you serving God because he's been good to you. Because people will change. People will turn. You better be praising God for God. Hallelujah today. You better praise God for what he's done for you. Hallelujah. The same people that say you're good today will put you on social media tomorrow. You better know who you're serving. You better know why you're serving him. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory be the God. Glory be the God. I woke up this morning with Jesus on my mind. I woke up to give him praise. If nobody came to church today, pastor would have showed up, preached the same sermon, and gave God a shout praise because I'm serving him. 
Hallelujah, somebody. Glory be the God. Jesus read through all of their hypocrisy. He read through it. And Jesus said, you're praising me today. He knew what was coming a week later. He knew that crowd that were praising him today were going to turn next week. The same one that said, Hosanna, one Saturday, were ready to say, crucify him, the next one. But Jesus wasn't worried about it. He said, I only came to do my Father's will. Whatever the Father told me to do, that's what I came to do. Hallelujah, somebody. Jesus said, Jesus said, watch what Jesus said. He didn't get caught up in the praise. Y'all better hear me now. Please hear what I'm saying. No, he didn't get caught up in the praise. Amen. Matter of fact, I, I'm going to say this before I close. I know some, some, some saints, I guess they saints, uh, they can't be at their best with one or two people around. But oh, if you give them a crowd. Oh, if you give them a crowd of people, they're ready to strut. They're ready to do their best. But you know, God will first test you with the little. And if you can't be faithful over a few things, come on church. You need to hear this. God will test your love with something small. And if you can't praise him with something small, but you'll tell him I can praise you if I get something big. No, you can't do it. It's like people who say, well, uh, I, uh, you know, if, if God give me $10 million, I'll give him a million. But you won't give him a dollar out of 10. <laughs> now, if you can't do it with the small stuff, I'm trying to preach to you. If you can't do it with the small things, you're not going to be able to do it with the big stuff. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, God will give you an apartment that's not all up to date first. I know you're ready for your big house on the hill, but if you can't give God pray for that apartment and say, God, I thank you for what I have right now. God want to see, can you give him praise for something small? Paul View, we just start praising God. We had a dilapidated mobile home leaning to the side. But we were giving God a Hosanna praise. It was a real praise and something small. The praise was just the same. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember this, try to close. As soon as Baby and I first got married, I don't tell y'all this two or three times, tell you again. And we had the best time that day that I can, one of the best times we ever had, just laughing. I went to work. Didn't make much money. We didn't have much. Just got married. And I came home to take a shower and I said, baby, where's the soap? She said, in the shower. I said, ain't no, ain't no soap in the shower. She said, did she look down all the other places? There's no soap. I said, well, there's three or two or three, two or three, two or three, uh, two or three. That me? <laughs> oh, that's you. Oh, all right. There's, there's two or three. Watch this. There's two or three small pieces in here. You got to take what you have. I wish I had a church up in here and put it together. Hallelujah. And give God a praise Come on, is there anybody in Parkview ever had to put what you had together? 
mash it together and say, God, I give you praise. Come on, give him a shout praise in here. Give God praise right now. If you were messing together, if you would give God praise, he'll give you something greater. He'll give you something bigger. Print all your complaining and give him a Hosanna. Somebody say Hosanna. Let me, let me go back. Let me go back. It wasn't, it wasn't fussing. It wasn't saying uh, how, you know, how the lack of money we had. It wasn't complaining that you used the last bit of soap and <laughs> we laughed and we gave God praise that he left enough in the house so we can make it work. Some of y'all complain where you ought to be giving God praise. For everybody that, that want to, watch it, that everybody that want to turn it around in the atmosphere, everything you ever complain about, give God a shout praise. Now, there's no problem with nothing. When you can praise him with nothing, he'll give you a problem that you don't have no problems. No problem with nothing, amen? To God be the glory. Jesus said, the rock will cry out if you don't give me praise today. He said, I'm not worried about this praise. The rocks will cry out if you don't, if you don't praise me. And so certainly, they went to murmuring, complaining, and crying out, crucify him. But I give God praise. He knew who he was, and he still knew who he is. Come on, give God a praise today. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve this Passion Week. This Passion Week. Hallelujah. For God so loved us. Hallelujah. Glory, God. Lift your hands. Let us touch and agree. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, teach us what it is to build a personal relationship with you, to love you. Then we can love our neighbors, our family. Yokes are being broken now. Hallelujah. We want to be more than religious people going through the motion and tradition of church. We want to know you, Jesus. Know you in the part of our sins. Know of your power and resurrection. Mm, you're so good. Let me give a testimony. Let me give a testimony before, before I open it, give the invitation to discipleship. Just feeling in my heart how good God is. I had, let me show you, you know, y'all know I do fish like the fish. So I brought, uh, uh, listen at this testimony, it's, it's so wonderful. I bought this brand new uh, motor. I put it, I took it to a shop. And the guy who put it on my boat said, man, this is the perfect motor for this boat. Now this happened yesterday. He said, this is a perfect motor for this boat. 
I said, good, you know what you're talking about. This is what you do. So I hadn't taken it out probably in months. I hadn't taken it out at all. I mean, since he put it on there. So he got there and said, let me go test it. I get out in the lake and the motor too heavy for the boat. It sounds comical, but I'm gonna tell you what happened. The boat starts sinking. So I just speed up and made it to the edge. Now the whole boat on the water. The boat on the water, but I'm not on the water. And so I was, I got to the edge, I tried to pull it in a little longer. I finally, finally took it all day, we got it home. And I'm just thinking, even this morning, not one time did I think that the Lord was gonna let me drown. Not one time. I'm a good swimmer, but I didn't feel like swimming. I'm thinking about sometimes we complain. So I got home and I, I said something to Sister Babels. I said, you know, guess what happened today? She said, what? I said, you almost lost a boat. She went go fishing. I said, you almost lost the boat and your husband. And she said, I ain't thinking about <laughs> she said, yeah, that's what she did say. I, I started to get comical, comical. But she said, I ain't thinking about the boat. And then I thought about when I got this morning. What does it matter if all the material things in the world were lost? The most important thing is God keeps us. Now give God a praise. He keeps us. Thank God for the material thing, but thank God for his love on us. Amen. Let us all stand. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God is still in charge. Where is Deacon Alexander at? Sing, just sing a little bit of that song as we prepare to give the invitation. In a few minutes, go ahead, start singing. Uh, in a few minutes, I want you to. Is that's that's not a hold up. Give me that. No, no. <laughs> All right, hold on, deep. Just hold on. Let me get the invitation. I think they were playing God is still in charge. But that's okay. Amen. Let's give our, our awesome God a, a hand right now before the invitation. Y'all good. Just hold it. Just hold it. Y'all good. Y'all. Okay, listen. I want to take this time right now. And I look around this church. And I see a large crowd this morning. Nothing really matters at all above your salvation. Nothing come close to decision, to all the decision you're going decision you're gonna make in your life. None will be closer or more important than this, accepting Christ Jesus as your Savior. None of them. None of them. And 
the only person that can make the decision for you is you. If I could make it for you, I'll come down here running. But I can't do that. No one else can. One of these days, our lives will come to an end. And we want to be absent from the body. We want to be present with God. Amen. More important than that, receiving Jesus Christ is not just about going to heaven. It is also for a better life right now. A better life right now. Amen. How many of your lives are so much better right now? Right now. So if there are any today, you're standing, you say, I have not accepted Jesus yet, but I want to. I want him as my Savior. I'm ready to confess my sins. If there be any today, and that's you that I'm talking about, that's you. I want you to get ready to come. If secondly, if you have already accepted Jesus as your savior, you moved in this area or you've been here a while and you're looking for a church to connect with, I do believe God has sent you to the right church. And I do believe God will have a purpose and you to find your place in that purpose to work with this local body, amen? So if that be the end of the day, you're coming on Christian experience, that means that you're already saved, or you're coming to give your life to Christ, uh, now at this time, I want you to come at that beginning. Be bold in Jesus' name. Be bold in Jesus' name. Be bold in Jesus' name. Come on down. Go ahead. Be, go ahead and Love you. God bless you. So glad you're here today. Come on. To God be the praise. Let's give God a, come on, young lady. Any other, be bold today. This is your day of transition and salvation. Give God a hand for this young lady coming here. Amen. Glory be to God. Someone else, be bold in Jesus' name. You hear God calling your name. You know it's time for you to make a life decision about Jesus. Life decision about worship, where you're going to worship. Amen. Amen. I believe that's someone else. No matter what age you are, you can come and be bold. Jesus calling your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be the God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be the God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. Your God pray for the three that are here today. <laughs> sister Harrison, who do we have? Pastor Davis. We have Sister Cheryl Charles, Cheryl Char Charles, I'm sorry. Christian Experience. Sister Pamela Brown, Christian Experience. Sister Gwendolyn Collins wants prayer. Okay. Charles and Brown, right? Yes. Sister Charles. Glad that you have made your mind up. How long have you been coming? Two months? Glad you made your mind up today. And you're a full covenant member of Parkview today. Glad to be your pastor. Amen. Amen. And Sister Brown.